everybody out there in YouTube land. And welcome to DC Fans United. So first off, I have a shout out for my friends over at OutrightGeekery.com. It's a really cool website that hosts cool info about geek stuff and comic book reviews, including this one. There is a link for that site in the description box. So starting off, this is my weekly review of a non-DC comic, and I will be doing this once a week, every week on Wednesday. And look for DC reviews throughout the week and a special video on the weekend. So the writer on this is Fred Van Lenty, the artist, and the colors are done by Bob Q, and the letters are by Travis Lanham. The cover is by Ty Templeton. Now the cover I really like. I think it's quite good. It's got both, you know, the spirit and Kato and the Green Hornet all on there really prominently. And it's an exciting cover. It's really well drawn too. I like it a lot, so much so that I like it better than anything else in this comic. So starting off on the first page, we have, as always, in these Dynamite books, as far as I've always seen anyways, they always have a full page, credit page at the very beginning, which is kind of handy. So starting off, I was kind of concerned because on this page here it says, You may think this story is about the spirit or the green hornet or their friend Kato, but it is not. And I was just like, oh dear, they're going to do one of these things. But it was actually a little more interesting than I thought it would be. So here's what it is. It's this guy. He's a rich business guy. Apparently he invented this thing called Novel Cane, which is like a parody of Novocaine. So he's real rich from that, but he's also crazy. So it's 1941 and he thinks the Nazis are going to come over to America and destroy it with balloons and stuff. So he decides he's going to hide out in a bunker under ground. And then we go to this next page, which is pretty cool. I like to see, you know, transition pictures like this where they show the same location over time. So that's kind of neat. You see it in 1941, and then in 43, it's got all the war posters and soldiers and stuff. And then in 48, there's no one there. And then in still no one in 54 so they demolish it in 1960 and then in 65 they start construction on it and then we pick up where the last issue left off so it's 1966 and the spirit and Cato and the Green Hornet are fighting the henchmen from the end of the last issue and Hornet has this idea he's going to use a new invention he hasn't tried out yet called Hornet's Buzz Bomb so he throws it and Cato puts in earplugs and all the henchmen and the bad guy Kid Kraken are all looking at it and then the little thing the hornet through goes buzz and apparently it's really loud because they're grabbing their ears and stuff and then at the same time in the very last panel on the bottom right you see an alarm clock going off and on the next page the alarm clock gets shut off and the guy we saw at the very beginning is waking up so he's been underground in this bunker for the past well basically 30 years and he makes some tea it looks like and he goes up and outside he says this is it i've done it i've awakened in the future so he thinks he's been down there a long time because while he was down there they built all of the world's fair stuff we saw in the first issue on top of him so he thinks he's gone forward a long time and there's some little jokes there like he's checking out the world of cola and they have a thing called depsy instead of pepsi and stuff like that so basically it's just humor based off of his interpretations of what it is. Oh, there was one thing I thought was kind of funny. He's talking about how everything is now ruled by the corporations and stuff. And I was thinking, well, this guy should like that because he was a CEO. And then you go to the next page and he says, it's like a glorious dream come true. So I thought that was kind of funny because the joke, you know, was set up on one page and you turn the page and you get the punchline. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, I got a little smile out of that. Uh, so one thing that's a little weird to me is I don't, the Green Hornet and Spirit, the way they're written in this 
these books, I don't know if it's always that way, but it's pretty lighthearted, like it's kind of humorous. I don't know if it's just because I'm used to reading DC and it's always like dark and, well not always, but you know, it's pretty major stakes all the time. It's like, okay, is the world getting destroyed or is the multiverse getting destroyed? This is like, I don't even know, they're fighting some henchmen and stuff. It's really campy. It's like, it's from a different time. So anyways, we uh, go to Kid Kraken and he's questioning his henchmen because they have captured the spirit and the Green Hornet and Kato yet, who are still on the run but then the henchmen are shooting at him so they jump behind a car and then we get a flashback and this was another time where I was like oh no because it cuts away from the story we care about and we get a backstory and this is when the spirit was blown up in 1952 and that was the last time he was seen before this comic in this continuity and his little friend there ebony white who's in the car gets knocked back and rocked back so to cover that the comic used four pages and then we're back in the action and they're still being pinned down and then they say they're gonna run into the fun house so that's pretty cool i mean that's something we've seen tv shows and stuff but anyways it's still kind of cool so they run in there and it's it's again it's kind of that goofy humor the henchmen can't find them and some of them are riding the ride and not really looking and all of the good guys are hidden in the shadows but you can still see them and then they jump out they've got the guys in a narrow passage which is actually a really effective way to fight when you're outnumbered and they ambush them and beat them up but there are even more henchmen so they decide to run outside and they run into the old guy and he says stop and the spirit runs by and says nice hat pops and the guy gets all mad he says the impertinence talking to a titan of industry like this and he tries to tell the bad guys about it but kid kraken stops and punches him in the stomach and starts threatening him but they decide he's crazy and just keep going after the spirit and the other two and the old guy is left there talking and he's like how how can i be safe anywhere oh yes of course we go to the next page and kid kraken's mad because his henchmen haven't found the good guys yet and it's daylight so they have to leave and then the good guys come out from the secret hatch they were underground and Kato and the Green Hornet want the spirit to explain what his deal is and why he looks younger, but then he disappears. And we see the crazy old dude has decided he's gonna, I guess, hide out in this space capsule thing because he thinks he's gonna get to the future that way. And then on the very last page, we see the guy who is pretending to be the spirit goes to this crypt and goes down to the bottom part talks to someone who's in the shadows and the guy in the shadows says how did it go and the pseudo spirit says that's the thing boss the green hornet isn't really after the spirit he's after you so i would assume that is octopus the villain there in the shadows so uh, that is the green hornet meets the spirit number two it was okay it was kind of ups and downs in the way where i was kind of like cringing because i was like oh this is gonna be terrible but then what they actually did was that wasn't quite as bad the whole plot though about the old dude who was basically put himself in a time capsule i don't know i thought that was kind of weird oh and i i skipped over it kind of but when he goes in the capsule he leaves behind his pregnant wife and yeah, he just leaves his, his unborn child and his wife behind. So he was a pretty unlikable, selfish guy, and the, you know, title characters were kind of over, overshadowed by it. Not that much happened. So overall, I'd give it, I guess, a 2 out of 5. And I'll be checking out issue 3, and that's all for now. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and being a part of PC Fans United. End of line.